the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. Yeah, I hope everybody having a great week. And I hope you have a great weekend. That, I mean, that's that's critical for you to understand. Take each day of your life and appreciate it. I was talking to a friend today, and I was talking the fact is that he had a quadruple uh, bypass. And uh, he said it's amazing when you start looking uh, at life from a different perspective when the possibility that uh, your clock, your time, your point of time is coming towards you. So it's always important to really do give the appreciation uh, of the day that you have. I mean, we all know it's, it's part of life that most people uh, either reach in their life at a good old age, um, 120 or the dead, uh, or of a tragic accident. So it's important for us to appreciate the day. You know, one of the things I, I like to say uh, to my mother, and you see most cases on the beginning of these videos, is that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. You know, because that's 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 critical for you and me to appreciate today and appreciate uh the, i think a lot of us know that when you get sick uh you know automatically sound you, you know you start regretting the depreciation of when you're healthy uh when you can 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 do things and and not be feeling real bad right you know so appreciate your blessing because those are blessings and, and let's make sure everybody understand, it ain't because of you. You can sit there and say it's you because of you, uh, but you deceive yourself. Uh, one of the things I wanted to, to talk about, and then I'll send it out uh, uh, as a video, is the truth. The truth will make you free. I, and the reason I, I wanted to go to the scriptures you know, because it's a word that makes a difference. Not so much what people say. It's just the word of God that makes a difference. And I guarantee you that people, uh, there's people who sit there and, and, and write on every word that you say with with intent for finding any faults or, or to, uh, to, to persecute or prosecute <laughs> if they can find a way to say that this this saying is, is, is contrary to uh, standard policies and doctrines. But let's, with that, besides that point, uh, and, and the fact is that there's some things that Jesus said that people don't like. But the truth will make you free. I was talking to, a, you know, and I think, I think a lot of cases that. A lot of these studies and stuff should be reflecting for what's going on in life, right? Uh, and, and bring those testimonies because we all have to try to figure out how we maneuver in life and, 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 and walk the Christian walk, right? And one of the things it was this the it was a the, 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 the point where uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who said it it had on his phone. Uh, his son gave him a, a, a nap that filtered in all the different types of new feeds that he likes to listen to. And in this case, all conservative uh, channels from, from, I guess, from Fox News all the way to some very far, far right channels. And, 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 I, and I asked the question, he said, I listen to them. Because I asked them, what about these other channels, CBS, NBC, you know, CNN, you know, and, and he'll sit there and say, I want to listen to the station that will tell the truth that I want to hear. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? The person was saying, I want to listen to the truth that I want to hear. And if you think about it is the person, the key piece is the truth. And that's what we're going to talk about in John chapter 8, where the truth will make you free. How many of us have taken that, the, that word literally truth and, and turned it into, and, 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 and overlay it with, I want to hear the lies. I want to hear lies. I want to hear things that, that satisfies my hearing, satisfies my point of view or what I think and how I think, regardless of the fact is that it's not the truth. You know, and I think that's why it's important for us to understand God's word is true, not us. Because what comes out of us is, is our perception of what we think is reality, our perception of what we think is best for us and not for somebody else. Uh, reality, truth of God, God's word is true. God's word sustains itself where our quote unquote truth will fall against somebody else's truth in the end. Whoever has the most influence and, and time, their truth will, will override your truth. But in the overall, we know that God's truth will override everybody's truth. And that's what we want to be able to understand. That's why he said that the just shall live by faith. And faith is the substance of things hopeful that everything is not, not seen. And the fact is that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What we see is people hear the, the, any, uh, they can hear something. They know it's not of God. They, they know it's not of God. But they hear it. And that's what they become. Or what they are, they need, need lies and just, just you know, hate or whatever, just to, to sustain themselves. You know, that's very important too. People hear what they want to hear, the lines of what they believe that life is. And they need to hear it over and over again. That's interesting, isn't it? And we know that's true, right? That's why some people will gravitate to one type of men, uh, media and, 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 that, and or even some media will sit there and say, you need to just listen to us. And I even seen that even in some church settings where the guy said, you don't need to be, and, and I heard it. I, I mean, I heard it in, in the church setting. I, I wasn't thinking too much of it, but now, now I realize that we could be part of ministries, organizations that whole purpose is to reinforce their doctrine instead of the word of God, especially if they, say, they claim to be uh, ministers of the word of God, some will sit there and say, uh, it's what is my pastor's view plus the word of God, opposed to we we all ministers and stuff, is that it's the word of God that goes first. So therefore, anytime I don't line up with the word of God, that's okay because it's the word of God. That's why we want people to study and show the self approved. That's why we want people to study the word of God so that they stay focused on the things of God. That's what Jesus said for John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Think about that as we go and repair this, uh, this, this, this message is the truth will make you free, but the truth must be the word of God, not man. Because man has a different version and sometimes a perverted version of truth that lines up with them. I mean, we talked about it from, from black superiority or white superiority, right? Or some other kind of ethnic group superiority or some kind of nation superiority. And we sit there and, and we would try to reinforce that. And, and we know we got a history of it. This history of bad things and then reinforcing of it and then trying to even impose that on the people that's being oppressed. You ever notice the fact is that in the past, the reason, you know, the word, the, 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 the N word, right? And you ever notice that when it was prevalent from, from the point of slavery all the way up to, I guess, the, the, the 70s and maybe the 80s, I don't know, maybe 70s, I think. It started going down a little bit. I'm being so, so widely spoken 
it actually started picking up that anywhere it started being picked up on the uh, hip hop, right? They were starting to say, you know, oh, you're giving that N-word, right? But but a lot of the um, uh, our white brothers uh, start stopped saying that because it was they recognized it was a very offensive term. And you know, maybe the fact that it was it was it became offensive because it was meant to be a reinforcement of what somebody else wanted you to be. Or one of the people that they were, you know, oppressing to be. You know, I got I got in other words, the, the justification for what was done was reinforced for hundreds of years of, of, of making sure that the person is identified as somebody who deserved what's happening. Matter of fact, that, that even triggered a response to me uh, the other day when one of my friends was uh, saying that that the the uh, the state of you know, Ukraine is that their hands not clean either. You know, they they equally, you know, that people would love to do that, right? When you talk about equally corrupt and all that, they use that to justify your action toward that other group. Because when they're talking about Ukraine and, and what Russia was doing, and some things are saying is that well, both of them, they knew one of their hands are clean. That I, I was like, I said, what they got to do with what the boy who's opposing and bombing and killing children, what does their hands not being clean has anything to do with the actions that is happening by the other nation that's supposed to be a modern, industrialized, educated nation. And then you sit there and you hear, you look at the stuff like on, on the, on the uh, embassies, right, and UN nation and stuff. I even heard one time the guy said today, we ain't bombing the Ukraine. You'd be like, what in the world? You can sit there and, and with a straight face tell the people that you're not doing something that you are doing. You sit there and tell them that the, we're just going after Nazis and yet you're bombing women and children and men and buildings that belong to uh, civilians, hospitals that belong to civilians. But you said, no, no, we're not doing that to those people. And it's right there in front of live TV. And you sit there and say, the truth, the truth will make you free. That's why I want y'all to know that because some of what we realize now is that when we, when people sit there, they have their own version of truth. I think somebody even told me today, they were saying is that <laughs> if it's a lie, but the person thinks it's a truth, it is a truth. That's interesting. Think about that. If someone believes this, believe a lie is a truth, to them it is the truth. That's why it's so important for ministries, for believers, to base their foundation of truth on the word of God, not on man, because man is a liar. And we got to understand that. You know, even they talk about children could lie. You got to teach them how to lie. They, they learn how to lie uh, very early in life, right? You know, you say, I look kid up there and find a, uh, uh, find a, uh, uh, do something, spill something over and say, I mean, we're not going to <laughs> You know what I mean? So, so we, we perfect the out of line uh, early in life. That's why it's not the words that comes out of other people's mouth that really should be your foundation. And maybe that's what I understand why somebody say, you know, I don't, I don't even like talking about the uh, history or the past or, or the present because it's so depressing. And you know what? I can relate where they're coming from. The fact is, it's the, but the truth will make you free, and that's what we want to sit there and get into. So what we'll do, we'll go into this real quick, and then we're going to let you go. Amen? But I, I want you to, to think about that subject. The truth will make you free. And that's what I want to uh, start off the, the day with, is the, uh, the scriptures about the truth will make you free. Uh, because...